Welcome back to part two of doing the floor. I mentioned the uh, fine liner brush that I used to make my lines for the, the floor and like in the, the lines that I did in the door. And I started to tell you yesterday, I'm not sure I finished the story, or I started to tell you when I was doing the shutters, I guess it was. This fine liner brush, uh, Jack did sign painting in college to help put himself through college. He, had several jobs. And so this brush, I will have to admit, is, well, he graduated from college in 1955. And this brush is at least as old as I am. I was one year old when he graduated from college. So anyhow, that's a testimony to taking care of your brushes. And we have found a product called Terpenoid Natural. This is a cleaner and it also conditions your brushes and it is wonderful and it keeps your brushes in tip-top shape because your brushes are your, your tools like a carpenter has tools. Uh, you just, if your brushes are not in good shape, you can't make good paintings. So it's very, very important to keep your brushes soft and pliable and they're very expensive so you don't want to keep buying brushes over and over. Eventually brushes will wear out. I have a couple of bigger brushes that I've just worn the bristles almost down to the stub of some of my favorite paint brushes and finally had to replace them and get a new one to train. But So take care of your brushes. Always clean them very very well. Alright I'm going to do now my horizontal lines and I come back I did go back in, I was talking about that dip in the floor, and I did go back in and kind of correct that a little bit. I just painted out this area under the door and re-pulled those lines so they were a little straighter. And that's the joy, again, of working in oils. You can just repaint out and paint over and work back and forth. So again, I just... The lines are folk the lines are closer together in the back and then they'll get further apart as we come forward. Again I used my cool colors on that base paint of the floor so that that will go back. So between the cooler colors at the back of the floor and then the perspective lines that really helps to give this painting depth. Cool colors go back warm colors come forward. And this is a good example. I've got my cool colors back here and my shadow up here is warmer. And that just makes that visually appear to drop back. We work on a two-dimensional surface which is the canvas and we are attempting to make it appear three-dimensional. Again, I pull out my ruler or T-square I want to see where this line needs to go. Okay, that needs to, yeah, I've had it up too high. And that just helps me to determine where I need to go with my line. Okay, so it'll come down this far. Just didn't feel quite right to me down there. Let's see if that's, I still think that dipped down too low now. Nope, that's about, I see I'm a little bit high in there. Okay. That's easy enough to correct. Just come in here and erase those lines. And then I'm going to make this line erase this one because I want that to dip down a little bit further. I can just take some of that color of paint. And then I'll redraw my line coming forward. And I'll redraw this line. Very easy to make corrections. Sometimes I have to paint some of these lines several times to get them correct. Some days I'm right on and other days I'm just have a little more jiggle in my hand. That one didn't go quite the way I wanted it to so we can just paint that out and do it over. 
just do it over. Get a mulligan on that. I think that's a golf turn, meaning that you get to make a play over, if I remember correctly. Okay, so I think this one isn't. That needs to go down a little bit too. That's my, what's bothering me. It just takes time to do this. Patience. Somebody told me, they said, yeah, they pray for patience. Oh, Lord, give me patience right now. <laughs> Sounds like something I do, too. That one is just not working exactly the way I want it to. I'm going to soften this edge. Okay, let's try this again. Clean out my brush. Get some new tissue. And here we go. All these lines in. Now, okay, that goes at this angle. There we go. Too much paint on my brush there. Now, as you notice, I'm getting a little bit wider. These are a little further apart than the ones in the background. With the camera there, also, I'm working at a little different angle to the canvas than I normally do if I'm not filming this, so this angle is a little bit awkward for me to pull, but I would be in front of the camera if I got in my normal spot where I usually work. So this is working. Also, they're in perspective going back that way, and they get closer together back there. They're further apart as they come closer to us on the left-hand side. When I first began doing these floors, I would extend my perspective points, my vanishing points out, you know, all the way and everything. But I've done so many of them now that I can pretty well eyeball where I need to be. If you pull the perspective points out, they may not be just perfectly exact, but they'll be pretty close. Now, the sun is coming in from the right, so I want to highlight the edge of those tiles where that sun catches them. And for this, I just mix a little white into my lighter mixtures, and I come. In fact, that could even be brighter. I mix a little more white into that. Catch just a little bit of this edge of the tile 
because it's up a little higher and it's just caught a little bit of light right there. Just a little touch of sunlight right there from this shaft of light that then's hitting down over here. Soft heel tiles are pretty rough. Some of those edges pop up a little bit higher and catch, catch the light before the flat edge of the tile does. I'll highlight first those areas that are in the sunlight and then we'll come back and then with a not as bright a light do the do the other edges but we want the sunlit edges to be nice and bright if you listen real carefully I think you can hear some of my feathered menagerie out there at the feeder. It sounds like there's a woodpecker out there. We have a ladderback woodpecker that comes to the feeder. And I don't know if any of you saw my video or my uh, blog about Braveheart. But he's a cardinal that just has one one leg. Apparently he got his other leg caught into something and he'd come to the feeder and he wouldn't announce himself. Our regular cardinal, Mr. Chippers, he always, you hear his chip, chip, chip as he's coming in. But Braveheart would not. And I named him Braveheart just because of his courage. I mean, he comes and he, or he would come and just feed. But if any of the other birds came, he'd fly away. And I tried to get a picture of him and I just couldn't. I mean, the minute that there was any movement, uh, I can see the feeder from my kitchen window he would just be gone. And I wrote about him and I said that he's really a reminder to me that God takes care of us. If he takes care of those birds and helps them adapt to their new situations in life, he's also there for us. And it was just a really good reminder. And the interesting thing is, is since I wrote about that, and I had a lot of people respond, comment on that on my blog. Since I wrote about that, I have not seen that little baby. And I almost have a feeling that God said, well, you, you got my message. It's time to send him to somebody else and let them get the message too. But it was sure fun seeing him. And he'd just hop around and he wasn't, he had no problem at all getting around. But he was very stealth. I mean, he would not announce himself. He just, so it was hard to know when he was at the feeder. And he may still be coming. I just did not see him because I'm not at the kitchen window all the time. But I just thought that was really a neat reminder for me. From our Lord. But here we go. And let these get a little cooler back here underneath the wheelbarrow and then we get a little warmer as we get back out here into the light. Me up a little more paint. I'm sort of out of the paint that I need. Getting too light there. Do these over here? I just love painting these tile floors. They're fun to do. They add quite a bit of dimension to the to the paintings with the perspective lines. Let's 
see one more little spot right here. I need to highlight. And there we go. That's our tile floor. I appreciate you watching my YouTube video. Please feel free to ask questions. You can ask them in the comments section. And please subscribe to my channel. I also have a blog. The, the address is in the description below and it's also on the final frame of the video. Again, I appreciate you watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day.